What, what happened? What changed? Well, you know, I spent four months in the hospital after uh, Wimbledon. I went straight away to um, to Italy to sort of um, starting to have some treatment. They couldn't really treat me there, but they were able to really diagnose what was wrong. And there was really something massively wrong with uh, my uh, my body. I, I really caught a really nasty virus back in India in February that got into my blood system. And from there, it was really a point of no return. So. Um, it was. I was really on the brink of really dying during Wimbledon, and oh yeah, when I actually entered the hospital in Paris, I mean, the doctor were actually shocked uh, that I was still alive because my my blood results were just so horrendous that um, they didn't know how I found the strength to just um, you know keep it on going and and living for those uh, few weeks and when I was in Wimbledon. So um, it was really a bit of a shock for me, you know, to, because obviously I knew it was bad, but I didn't sort of knew it was that bad in yeah. a way. It got to the stage where you were, where you were thinking when you were at Wimbledon last year, well, if I die here, this is uh, as good yeah. a place for me to die as anywhere. I've had one of my greatest moments here, and if it ends here, then, uh, you know, you were so, almost thinking like that. Yeah, exactly. No, I was really thinking like that just because um, Wimbledon was so, a big part of my life and was so important to me that I thought, well, you know, I don't want to um, obviously die at that moment, but if it had to happen, mm -hmm. then if it is at Wimbledon, in a way, that's fine with me. But it was, it was just at 31 years of age, you know, three years before I was a Wimbledon champion, lifting that trophy, winning seven matches in a row without dropping a set, and here I am three years later um, on the brink of dying and, and really couldn't have a sort of a positive echo from the people yeah. outside just because all of them were thinking well she's anorexic so in a way that's her problem and that's not really something we can help with and that was just so hard because I was like knowing me and how positive I am and how smiley I am and how, how much I love life um, it's just something that people thought about me that was not possible if you know me myself mm -hmm. deeply and that's why it was so difficult for me to just handling this whole pressure from the public and yes. and going through that in the public eye. Well, it's it's when you look at the look back at the the requests you had to have because mm -hmm. um, we have all sorts of requests when people come in here which are <laughs> outrageous. But yours, you had to have. Yeah. Um, when you came in the, l last year, you had to have uh, organically sealed and salad uh, leaves in it with cucumber, washed in mineral water. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the drinks were not stirred with anything metal. You were unable to touch your mobile phone without covering your hands in gloves. Your skin was incredibly thin. Your body was in total breakdown. Absolutely. I was losing my hair actually by a full head every day. You know, I was just really brushing my hair and see the, the whole thing just falling. My teeth were actually moving and sort of on the brink of falling as well And when you're five or six years old. But um, I had a girl actually work for ITV now, which is Georgia, who helped me during those two weeks. And she was just, you know, so sweet trying to give me that energy to go through every day. 